well, gratitude, because Jim put me in the cabinet straight away. As soon as Harold had gone, Jim took over, I was in the cabinet. Um, he, he, he was a remarkable man, Jim. He was a man of no formal education, who was terribly knowledgeable, ter was terribly well-educated, mentally well-educated, but done it all on his own. Um, and he had some strange characteristics, one of which was uh, self-depreciation. But he was a good Prime Minister, and had he won the 79th general election, had we had it at the right time and won it, and we would have done had we had it earlier. With another five years, he might have just been a great Prime Minister, but I think he did very well under impossible circumstances. Well, uh, I was so much involved in it, I'm uh, not the right person to ask, but you do ask me, so I, then, uh, it was inevitable. I mean, the, we had to have a prices and incomes policy, we had to hold down wages. Uh, but we probably didn't play it quite as well as we should. There's a secret about this, which never gets into newspapers, but should. 5% was a great argument. And the TUC had come out in favour of 5%, but individual unions had come out against. Transport and General in particular. Transport and General's biannual conference at Isle of Man had shouted down Jack Jones when he tried to support it. <coughs> the economic minister in the cabinet, Healy, Booth, Varley and Hattersley met the what we call the NNED5, the five senior members of the TUC, and said, what do we do? And I was for modifying the 5%. But Len Murray, the general secretary of the TUC, said, blind it through and you get away with it. And we tried to blind it through, which is probably a mistake. But we had to have a wages policy and we had wages down, otherwise the inflation would have gone through the roof. But we didn't play it as well as we should have played it. We should have been... Prepared to negotiate a bit.